నాకు నిన్నటి దాకా నేను ఎట్టగట్ట కంట్రోల్ చేసి ఇక్కడ ఉంచుకుందని చెప్పి అనుకున్నాను రా
We gather today, united in a spirit of quiet reflection, to celebrate the life of Professor Mujkundube, a scholar whose wisdom illuminated minds and a leader whose compassion touched countless lives. His presence left an indelible mark on all who knew him, and his passing has created an emptiness in our hearts. Today, we honor his memory by sharing stories and reflecting on his profound impact, celebrating the legacy of a remarkable individual who enriched our lives in so many ways. Our remembrance commences with the soulful melodies of Mr. Vivek Bola and his team. Their rendition of bhajans of Kabir and Meera, imbued with themes of love, devotion, and the pursuit of proofs resonate with Professor Dubey's lifelong dedication to knowledge and service.
मन जो करना है जल्दी कर लो इस जग में अनंत रूप सृष्टि सची रची है साई ने सुना है मानव का कोई उत्तर न उसमें देव देवता गण करें आराधना जन्म लेने इस मानव रूप में कितने भाग्य फल से न जानो रे मन पाए हो या मानव तरणी खे जाओ त्वरित तरी सही धारा में ताकि नाव डूब ना जाए किसी मानुष से होगा माधुर्य पर भजन तभी तो मानव रूप गढ़ा निरंजन ने इस बार धोखा खाया तो मिलेगा ना किनारा दास लालन ऐसा ही सोचे मानव जन्म आरे की हे मन जा कर सृष्टि मानव रूप देव देवतागण कर आराधन जन्म नीते मानव देव देवतागण कर आराधन जन्म नीते मानव मन जा कर जब वह रूप स्मृति में आए रही न लोक लज्जा का भय लालन फकीर गुण के कहे सदा ऐसा प्रेम जो करे वही जाने मिलन तो दीने आमर मोनेर आमर मोनेर मिलन 
मिलन हो बे कतो दीने मिलन हो बे कतो दीने आमर मोनेर मनुष्येर शौने आमर मोनेर मनुष्येर शौने Oh, 
कपाल का फेर न होता आज पंछी का न होता यह व्यवहार पिंजरा तोड़ पंछी मेरा किस ओर उड़ जाए मन तुझे रही पिंजड़े की आशा पिंजड़ा जो तेरा कच्चे पास
কোনদিন খাঁচা পড়বে খোসে কোনদিন খাঁচা পড়বে খোসে লালন ফকির কমলে আসে যায় খাঁচার ভিতর পচি পাখি কমলে আসে
glimpse into Professor Dubey's life and accomplishments, a gentle reminder of his lasting legacy. memories and reflections to pay homage to Professor Dubey with a few words from those who knew him well. I invite Professor Biswajita, Vice President CSD, a close colleague of Professor Dubey. celebrate the life and achievements of an <clears throat> incredible uh, uh, intellectual, really power excellence, and an extraordinary human being whose, whose generosity knew absolutely no bound. Now, I've known him for the past uh, <clears throat> three and a half decades, and uh, uh, the kind of, uh, I've just had a loss of words. What I've got from Professor Dubey is absolutely incredible. Today, what I am today here, standing here, is almost entirely because of this this person, you know, and he was, uh, he gave me everything that possibly I could, I could get in a lifetime. And, uh, his was a life, and I always talk to him as a person who, who taught us so many things. 
you know, his life was absolutely dedicated to the cause of equity and social justice. And, and this is, these are some of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 these, these actually stood out in whatever he did as one of India's top diplomat in the areas of uh, nuclear disarmament or, uh, or economic diplomacy where uh, he did some incredible work and something that I can appreciate as, uh, as, as, as his student um, in, in the area of, uh, of, of, uh, of, uh, of economic diplomacy in South-South cooperation. This entire area of South-South cooperation has lost a friend I don't think uh, we'll ever have another one uh, ever. Uh, his, 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 his cause uh, towards South Asian integration was something that uh, really pursued with uh, his friends in South Asia. In, in such, uh, with such incredible dedication that you can't just imagine, you can't have it from anyone, uh, what he did. Then uh, in the area of, uh, after, after he retired, he took up this uh, cause of uh, equity and social justice as, as an academic. Of course, he was doing it even early, even earlier as an academic, uh, and, uh, and 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 one of his uh, most significant contributions is uh, the Right to Education uh, Act, which you know he, he pursued till the last day. You know, CSD was one of the hubs for the implementation of the Right to Education Act. And, and his course, uh, uh, you know, for the, uh, uh, the uh, realization of, uh, of uh, um, uh, right to development, you know, the, the right-based development approach was, was something that uh, we all uh, looked up to him for guidance and, and inspiration. And that's, that's something that we are all going, going to miss. Now, uh, the other facet of uh, Professor Dube, which you just saw in his literary works, he knew several languages. And, uh, and, and, and one thing that, that really stood out is his love for, for literature. So, you, you know, you can't just imagine a, a hardcore diplomat and, and a lover of literature in all these different languages. And as, as a Bengali, I can say that is, uh, he was, uh, uh, he, he loved the language, you know, apart from the other languages, he loved the Bengali language. And many of the, the renowned poets of, uh, from, of Bengal on both sides of the border, uh, he, could, he could recite their poems by heart. So there won't be a moment of uh, boredom with him whenever he would discuss things with him. Uh, we would discuss things with him. Suddenly, he would come up with a couplet from Bangladesh, uh, Bangladesh poem, a renowned poem, Bangladesh point, and, and, and recite it to us. Uh, of course, one other thing I must say that you know he had an elephantine memory, and many of your, uh, many of you, his friends who are sitting here, I actually came to know all of you much better from him. He used to say, tell, sit and tell me about all your achievements, all your qualities, and. Just, just narrate it to me. That, you know, so and so, you know, you were there. Your families. In fact, I don't know most of your families, but through Dubey sir, I, I actually come to know, I've come to know what is his family, uh, your, your families as well. So you know, I have actually lost a, a friend philosopher guy, and he's almost uh, losing your father once again, and uh, that's what uh, he meant to be. Uh, and, and I would just pay my tribute wherever he is. He, he, he must be keeping everyone very, very happy. And of course, we'll never lose him because what he has done to us, what he gave to us, this will remain with us all for the rest of our lives. Thank you.
Mrs. Dubey, Madho, and members of Professor Dubey's uh, family, our uh, prayers are with you in this hour of grief and profound loss. All of us assembled here share your sense of a void being left behind by someone whose reassuring presence looms so large and reassuringly in our lives. I would say that though he uh, belonged to our foreign service uh, tribe, I refer to him as Professor Dube rather than as a pastor because he was quintessentially a lifelong scholar, a seeker after knowledge, and uh, someone who uh, throughout his uh, life, whether when he was in, in service or uh, later after retirement, um, he had, he had uh, almost a childlike you know, curiosity about the world uh, around him. And this was very infectious uh, for, for all of us. That is why I said that it's perhaps more appropriate to refer to him as Professor Dubey. Uh, he was, uh, in a true sense of the term, uh, really a Renaissance uh, figure, uh, a scholar, a diplomat, a poet, as we saw, an author. He was for us, um, or rather, I would say for me, uh, he was certainly uh, a mentor in every sense of the term. Uh, yes, I can perhaps not say that uh, I even fractionally managed to emulate his professional and personal uh, qualities, but he was always like a guiding uh, North Star. Uh, he, he was someone with uncompromising intellectual integrity. Um, he was able to uh, marry, you know, passion with purpose. He had a very fierce sense of national interest. I saw that working with him, whether it was in Geneva or whether when he was foreign secretary here in, uh, in Delhi, fierce sense of national interest as I see. But uh, in a very interesting way anchored uh, in an awareness of our common humanity uh, and uh, the need also uh, for ethical anchors. Uh, during his interactions with various, uh, you know, leaders and diplomats, um, sometimes he would uh, engage in very contentious, uh, you know, debate. Uh, and yet, uh, there was something uh, which nobody could doubt, and that was his credibility. <coughs> and that credibility is a quality that I think, as a diplomat, stood him very, very well. Um, many people do not uh, perhaps uh, realize that uh, he served as foreign secretary at a particularly turbulent and I would say very uh, risky sort of time for India. This was end of the Cold War, India facing bankruptcy, um, you know, our international position rather shaky. And uh, it was thanks to Mr. Uh, Dobe as Foreign Secretary uh, that uh, we managed to, in fact, uh, you know, navigate those shores uh, with uh, the kind of uh, success that we did. He was uh, made a very major contribution uh, in that respect. Uh, so, um, sir, we are going to uh, miss you, and uh, may of a fleet of angels, you know, accompanying you to your eternal address. Thank you. We have received messages from Sri Anandora, former president and life trustee, I have seen Sri Prabhat Gandhi, life trustee, I have seen. We have shared your unique perspectives on Professor Dubey's life and work. I invite Sri Pian Srivastava, Director IAC, to read the messages. I 
I pay my homage to Professor Dubey, whom I knew for almost four decades. He was indeed a great human being, a very renowned diplomat, and uh, a great academician. One another facet of personality perhaps has not been mentioned of Professor Dubey, which I would like to mention is that he was also a very keen bridge player. I remember the period 87 to 89 when I was working in the Ministry of Personal Affairs. I sat across the bridge table with him on several occasions. <coughs> now I read out the <coughs> condolence messages that uh, we have received from uh, Mr. <coughs> N.N. Vora and thereafter uh, Sri Gopal Krishnagandhi. First message from Sri N.N. Vora. I got to know Muskund when he was our ambassador and PR to the UN bodies in Geneva and I was representing the UN Health Ministry in our dealings with the World Health Organization and later when I served as consultant to the WHO at the Geneva. After some years, when he was a foreign secretary and I was serving as a defense secretary, we had to work closely in the wake of the serious disruptions which followed the end of Cold War. After I retired and I was serving the India Interest Center, Mushkun Dube was teaching international relations in JNU, JNU and joined the Council of Social uh, Development, which he literally served till he departed a few days back. Besides being an astute diplomat who has left an indelible mark in his long and successful service to the nation, Mushkun had a lofty and deeply entrenched commitment to the cause of social development. Clear-headed and unwavering, he was unwavering in his objectives, altogether unbothered in the journey. He took his bright, bright uh, high achievements, both in diplomatic and academic arenas, shall be long remembered. I pray to the Lord to rest the departed soul in eternal peace and give strength to Mrs. Dubey and his two daughters to bear this irreparable loss with fortitude. Om Shanti Shanti. Now I will read out the message of uh, Sri Gopal Shri Gandhi. Dunya mein koi chota ya bada nahi hota hai. Hota hai khota ya khara. Mujkun ji is tathya ko jante the. Aur is liye sansar se unka rishta saaf tha. Na kisi se भटना न किसी से डरना ईमानदारी से ईमानदारी बेईमान से ऐसी शक्ति कि वो जिंदगी भर न भूले न्याय उनके लिए किताबी तत्व तो नहीं बल्कि हकीकत की सांस थी जीवन की लीला ने उन्हें राजनीति के दलदल से बचा दिया शुक्र है और राजनयिक बना दिया भारत की विदेश नीति धन्य हुई उन्होंने दिखाया कि दुनिया से रिश्ते कि सजाय किसी अजायब घर में नहीं सजनता के सदन में बनते हैं मुचकुन जी हिंद की नस्ल के बने थे हिंद ने आज हाथ जोड़कर नमस्कार करता है गोपाल कृष्ण First of all, this was jointly curated, not just by me, Suhas Borkar, Samsung himself, so many friends, Nitananda, so many friends put together their minds, and the IIC, <laughs> uh, Mr. Wadi and others. Thank you all very much. I want to celebrate Muskundube, the life and work of Muskundube. Uh, I saw him during the last 20 years after I had retired and he invited me to join CST. I saw a global citizen, a rooted, very deeply rooted Indian and an education missionary, three rolled into one. 
and so closely we worked together in the last 20 years. And so many projects that we initiated during the last 20 years together were possible because he was the principal supporter and presidents like Kapila Vatsha and Anil Bora and now Sam Saran were able to give their full support. When we thought of organizing the Hind Swaraj Centenary, we had the full support of the government agencies, ABA, ICSSR, etc. And we had three days, all facilities, all the halls in annex as well as here, seminars and big halls occupied by 50 international delegates and so many others. A few years ago in 2019, when we didn't get any ICSR or MEA support, still Mr. Hora said to Mr. Dubey, let's go ahead, we'll do it. And that is very fresh in our memory, so many of you participated. That was equally successful thanks to the determination and the method of doing, because the values were very, very deep. You know, the global citizen could appreciate the Bandung spirit. What, in fact, during the last 20 years, I saw his whole life summed up in so many projects, activities. You know, the rooted Indian could be the rooted South Asian, could be the author of Lalan, Fakir in Hindi, in translated into Hindi and so on. And could also be the secular person, the, the, the missionary secular person, as the president of the Forum for Democracy and Communal Amity. Last 20 years after uh, Takule died, he succeeded, and he has been so active in the secular movement. Same with the Education missionary, the right to education movement, then the act, then the forum, and after his very close, uh, you know, comrade in this campaign, Ambarish Nai passed away during the COVID. Uh, he continued, he has revived it with the same full gusto. So to that global citizen, the rooted Indian education, education missionary, I pay my tribute, and his social development philosophy embodied all that, and we are determined to carry it forward. Thank you. I invite you, Dr. Deepak Nair, distinguished professor, CST, for sharing some memories of his association. Mrs. Dubey, Mujkun's extended family and friends. In Mujkun Bhai, I always call him that, we lost a distinguished citizen of India. It is sad news and an irreparable loss for his family, friends, colleagues, and admirers who span a wide spectrum of age straddling the vast geographical space of India, indeed the outside world. His was a remarkable life in our times of an extraordinary person who contributed so much to the public domain, in economy, policy, and society. Uh, which could do away with a man of many parts, a consummate diplomat, a superb civil servant, a committed research scholar, a public intellectual, a literature, a columnist, a social activist, and most importantly, a concerned citizen. For me, he was a close friend for more than four decades. 
and I have not quite come to terms with the reality that he has left us. I first met Buchgul in 1980, soon after I returned from England and was teaching at the Indian Institute of Management in Kolkata. It was a meeting and a conference, but it was the beginning of a lifelong friendship. As it turned out, the intersections in our professional lives were almost continuous thereafter. Uh, it began with the time I was in the Ministry of Commerce from 1983 to 85 as economic advisor when Muchkun was India's permanent representative at the United Nations. Uh, for him, it was a world of multilateralism as he sought to, to nurture uh, and a passionate commitment to the idea of disarmament, to human rights, while I was engaged in the more mundane world of multilateral trade negotiations in the GATT. But I learned much from him in that period. Uh, as it turned out, uh, not much later, we, had, we were together once again from uh, in 1990 and 1991, when I was Chief Economic Advisor in the Ministry of Finance, uh, Muchkun Bhai was Foreign Secretary, Shridang Shukla, another great friend of his, was uh, Commerce Secretary at that time. Uh, and we met once a week over lunch. This continued through those two turbulent years in the economy, in politics, in the world. Uh, Yashwanaji is here, he will remember uh, that time uh, when we worked together. And Shirak Shukla then moved to the Ministry of Finance as Finance Secretary, and this association continued. Uh, it was not about uh, the usual debates, it was about rescuing the Republic of India uh, from the mess that we were in. Uh, now, you know, coincidences this has happened. I returned to, to JNU, and not that long after, Muchkun moved to JNU. Uh, and he had a second life after retirement. It began with JNU, and it continued at the Council for Social Development, uh, where his passionate commitment uh, to social justice, to social development, to the well-being of people, ordinary people, gave him the, 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 the canvas uh, to, to, to work on. And he persuaded me, uh, although I led a mad life, to join the governing body of CST. Uh, what is more, I was also a tenant as chair of the Nehru Cambridge Trust. We leased the first floor of uh, CSD, the ground floor of CSD, and it gave me lots of opportunities to have conversations with him. But I want to recount to you three episodes of uh, our times together. Uh, once, I think this was the mid-90s, I was invited to give a public lecture at the planetarium in Patna. Uh, I have seldom come across such a razor-sharp audience. Muchkun chaired that lecture, and he then said, Deepak, I want to take, take you to Patna University, where I was a student. It was then a center of learning, and we walked the promenade along the Ganga, and uh, he had tears in his eyes, because most rooms were locked. Those that were not locked had cobwebs, and he says, this is what had happened to Patna and to the Republic of Bihar. We worked together again in, in 1996 uh, as the term of the Narsimara government was coming to an end. Uh, there were 10 of us, including Muchkun and I, academics, uh, civil servants, media persons, civil society, who produced a vision document and a strategy document for the government to come. Uh, it was the first political pamphlet all of us did together. Uh, with the acronym INREP. Uh, it was well received before the elections, but once the governments assumed office, whether it was Gauda's government or Gujarat's government, uh, this was really 
dumped into the dustbin, life went on, as it were. Uh, a third uh, kind of thing that people, well, I, I think somebody mentioned an interest in commitment to South Asia. Uh, you know, there is something called the South Asia Center for Policy Studies. It is a network of uh, research institutions. It is a network of civil society people uh, in all countries of South Asia. Mm. Now, it has a very distinguished lineage. The founders of this were Sayyid Babar Ali from Pakistan, uh, Rehman Sohan from Bangladesh, uh, and Muchkun along with Arjun Sen Gupta uh, from India. Uh, and uh, it was only Muchkun Bhai who could have persuaded me, uh, along with Rahman Subhan, uh, to, to, because he, he, he believed in the spirit of Sark, uh, which never really uh, materialized. He believed in the idea of South Asia, as all these people did. And he did persuade me, along with Rahman, to become co-chair of Sussex a role that each of them performed, uh, and we are based here the Secretariat with, with, at, at RIS with Sachin Chaturvedi. Uh, it has been a struggle. The idea of South Asia and cooperation among South Asian countries has become even more elusive. Uh, so in a sense, these are different glimpses of Muchkun's life that I wanted to share with you, which I share with him. Uh, which could buy the person. He worked incredibly hard at everything he did. And that motivated people who worked with him. He was a hard taskmaster. He had zero tolerance for slip-ups or incompetence. But he burnt the midnight oil at everything he did. And he was humane, kind, helpful. And may I say, egalitarian. Muchkun was at least 15 years older than I. Uh, but that difference in age uh, never entered his mind. I, his, 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 his caring for those who were vulnerable, for those who were excluded, for those who were deprived, is something that came through almost every day in his life. Uh, I remember very fondly his mischievous, almost childlike smile, his uh, striking laughter uh, when amused, uh, and the twinkle, once again almost childlike in his eye in conversation. He had courage of conviction which enabled him to speak truth to power, and I have been present on many of these occasions. Uh, people like Muchkun Dubey, I believe, are a vanishing breed, if not an endangered species in the Republic of India. We will miss him. Even so, rather than mourn his passing, I would urge us to celebrate his remarkable life. I'd like to invite Shri Jain Prasad, a distinguished foreign policy expert, for his thoughts. Friends, this is Dube, Peda, and Madhu. <coughs> Mera couldn't be here this morning. Since we are remembering a man larger than life, I agree with Professor Mohanty and Dr. Nayar that there should be a celebration of a life fulfilled. Dube ji had multifaceted experiences and contributions. He was a fine diplomat, a national and international civil servant, unit lover, teacher, scholar, 
economist, bridge and tennis player, and an activist in his own way. Dubeji's USP had been his mastery of multilateral diplomacy. G77, a forum for developing countries, was formed in 1964. Five years later, when Dubeji was only a first secretary in New York, he was elected chairperson of G77. In that capacity, he shaped the strategy for the second UN development decade, that is for the 1970s. He was the only, he, 10 years later, he was unanimously elected chairperson of the General Assembly PREPCOM for formulating the strategy for UN's third development decade. Sri Sham Saran wanted Dubeji's associates to speak this morning about different facets of his life and work. I had the good fortune to work with him, first as a probationer attached to the BSM division, which he headed, then as first secretary PMI Geneva, and finally as his staff officer when he was foreign secretary. I will recall a couple of instances which show how forthright and effective Dubeji was. I remember just before Operation Desert Storm in mid-January 1991, the US CDA Grant Smith called early bearing a note from the US government for overflights and refueling to enable the American military to shift their 7th fleet supplies to the 6th fleet area before the operations. The US note stated that its government was seeking our cooperation due to India's international obligations that derived from the Security Council Resolution 687. Dubeji handed back the note to Grant Smith. He said the language of the note was such that he could not even consider giving it to, for consideration to his political bosses. Smith was smart and he got the hint and returned very soon carrying a fresh note that asked for India's help in view of the friendly relations between India and the United States. The then Prime Minister Green flagged the US request within a couple of hours. Dubeji could also make a point endearingly. Once in 1989 on a Sunday, I was tasked to prepare uh, an invite for an international conference that the ministry was hosting. I completed the draft sent it to his office and went home. Late evening, Dubeji dropped by our flat in Rajiv Nagar. He said he was looking for me in office, but didn't find me. Before I could say anything, my wife, Bunty, stepped in and said she had called me home. Dubeji disarmingly told her, look, it seems both you and I need Jan Prasad. The solution is that we divide him up and keep one half each. Mercifully, Bhanti never called me again to ask when I was coming home. Dubeji had unbounded energy and literary interest. We all know that over the years, he translated the poems of Ladan Shah Fakir, sung beautifully just now and by Farida Parveen in this very hall in the summer of 2017. In the recent past, he was concerned about the lack of inclusivity in India, the gap between the rich and the poor, growing unemployment, and the falling standards of public education and health. In his passing, we have lost part of our conscience. There is much to say, but I'll end here.
I invite Dr. Shina Tridi, a public health advocate for Brain Review to Professor Dubey's unveiling brief in social progress and his delegation to the Human Rights To the very many friends of Professor Mushkan Dube who have gathered here to pay homage to his hallowed memory. It's not common to find that every year of a long life is packed with amazing accomplishments and socially impactful contributions. Professor Mushkan Dube's life offers us such an inspiring example. Indeed, all those who have known him much better than I have over many more years have spoken so eloquently of his very many attributes. And it was a privilege to sit and learn about all of that. Indeed, his incisive intellect expansive scholarship, his insights into social policies, and unwavering commitment to public good have made him a great role model for all who came to know him directly or indirectly. And this commitment to public good was very evident, whether as a distinguished public servant or as a dedicated civil society servant. Indeed, a man for all seasons and a hero for all the right reasons. I met Professor Dubey for the first time in person in 2011 when the report of the high level expert group on universal health coverage was presented to the erstwhile planning commission of India. While there were several debates about the recommendations, whether they represented a full commitment to the public sector or not, his strong endorsement of the report was a highly valued vindication of our recommendations for health equity. His wisdom put the stamp on our own aspirations and yearnings for universal health coverage in India. Subsequently, I've had the privilege of benefiting from his profound wisdom and warm friendship which bridged the years. And I have indeed had the opportunity of being guided by him on many matters even during the brief period of our relationship. His idealism, courage of conviction, clarity of thought, precision of communication, and exemplary leadership are memories to cherish. How does one even sum up such a life? Let me borrow the words of William Shakespeare. Quote, his life was gentle, and the elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to all the world, this was a man. Along with all of you who have known him and have cherished his memories, I do celebrate Professor Dubey's well-lived life and salute his inspirational memory. Professor Estimuni, Professor Emeritus Jamie, for sharing his thoughts and experiences.
friends we are all here with a very heavy heart to celebrate professor dubey's life many dimensional achievements and virtues of him have already been narrated and i had notes full of them but i want to pay tribute to him on behalf of the jnu and one dimension of him which is not often uh, been talked about is professor dubey as a teacher he was very privileged to have him as a colleague in south asia center soon after uh, he completed his term as a foreign secretary i think there was a formidable sensitive scholar sitting deep into a diplomat dubey for a long time this has started appearing even with I think in '53 he translated Gitanjali, Tagore's Gitanjali, and later on so many things which have come over here. As a teacher, he was very strict. He was very straightforward and wanted discipline. Many times he came and told me that look, some of these students are not. I said you must punish them if they are not doing it. and i tell you all of them all these students later on uh, came and said they could not have completed their phd if they were not working with professor dobe three of them in delhi were present at the at his cremation and another two of them called me from distant parts of india to say that their tribute should be paid here He had a great love for South Asia and South Asian cooperation, as has already been mentioned. I recall 1986 when we had the SARC summit here. He called some of us and said, "What are the new ideas which can be given?" The academics are often eccentric. I gave two, three very wild ideas: SARC Parliament, SARC University, SARC Chairs. and sark scholarships he laughed on the idea of parliament he said this is too far fetched it has uh, it's impossible to put it in practice in the given circumstances university also he said it's a uh, big idea we'll think about it later but he pursued immediately the sark chair and sark fellowship programs and they were implemented unfortunately they could not be sustained because the implementation of them was given to the ugc uh, bureaucracy put it this way uh, he had a great friendship with all the south asian scholars i think he has turned out about 12 books three or four during his stay with us in jnu in a period of eight years which many of the jnu faculties have not done or probably cannot do uh out of these books he collaborated with bangladeshi scholars rahman subhan's name has already been mentioned uh with pakistani scholars with nepali scholars and of course with the indian scholars what comes out of interacting with him is a very sensitive person not only on matters related to foreign policy or multilateral diplomacy which of course was his strong forte but also on uh, political and social dimensions of indian polity and he was very sensitive to the questions of communalism and all that i think to some extent he experienced the the the, the what 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 should i say the uh, burden of casteism in reverse against him because uh, uh, you know his political aspirations which shri gopal gandhi has said it is good that he did not get it but that was largely on the basis of uh, caste considerations he shared with us it was unfortunate because he would he would have made a very different political uh, activist a very different politician uh, as uh, everybody has said we pay tributes to him and we celebrate his life we in jnu will continue to miss him 
we had a condolence meeting for him and probably we will think of uh, working out if possible. I am no longer on the regular faculty of the JNU if we can bring about a volume in his memory. Thank you. Now I invite Sri Suhas Bolka, Trustee IAC, to share personal anecdotes and reflections. Lalita ji and mother, members of the CSD and IIC family. Professor Mujkun Dubey shall be remembered equally for his illustrious career as a top diplomat, not only representing India, but also the aspirations of the global south, and as a dedicated scholar, fired by intense passion and tireless energy in his pursuit of social development, education, and justice. Despite his frail health in the last few years, he had kept himself to a punishing schedule for his academic work. As Ambassador Chinmoy Gare Khan recently said, there are many ambassadors, but only one professor in the Indian Foreign Service. That was the exceptional human being, Professor Muchkun Dubey. I wish to recount Briefly, an episode of the period 1979-80, a dissertation, the new international economic order and north-south divide and a dialogue voting pattern in the UN General Assembly of an MPhil student of the School of International Studies, JNU, was sent to Ambassador Muchkun Dubey when he was in Geneva with Uktar. But he soon moved to Dhaka as India's High Commissioner. Despite the pressures of the new assignment, he spent considerable time meticulously going through the dissertation almost line by line like a hardcore academic and sent a detailed note of about 20 pages, a number of pointers to rephrasing the sentences, paras and corrections, even grammatical errors. To everyone's surprise, he recommended that looking at the quality of the work done by the student and the sources the student had consulted, he deserved a PhD. He did so as a caring academic and his strong recommendation for award of a PhD was unprecedented. The student of SIS JNU, Harun Rashid Khan, joined the Reserve Bank of India and rose to be the deputy governor. Professor Muchkun Dubey was brought up in the Nehruvian mold, as many have said, and the Bandhu spirit, and he remained steadfast to his values and ideals. Post his retirement from foreign service in 1991, his new avatar as a scholar for the next 30 years was amazing. We saw him move into the civil society domain with remarkable ease and comfort as an activist and a public intellectual. Whenever one visited his chamber at CSD, one found him completely immersed in his academic work and his table loaded with a huge pile of files, papers, and books. Whether it was a meeting and guiding scholars from across the country, sharing seminars and brainstorming sessions at the council, or writing papers, monographs, and books. He was a workaholic who, could not, who would not suffer fools in any way. In June 1917, his book, Lalan Shah Fakir Ke Geet, on the Bengali mystic, poet, and social reformer was launched. The book from which Professor Puvanan recited verses and Professor Ashish Ghosh sang in Bengali. At the launch of the Bangladesh, at the launch, at this launch, Bangladesh's information minister and chairman of the Bangla Academy had socially flown in from Dhaka, showing the close relationship 
he had that country where he had served as India's High Commissioner 35 years before that. In many ways, his work on education showed his belief that quality education was a basic right for all children, irrespective of caste, class, gender, and religion. He remained a firm advocate of the common schooling system. He argued that it was not a utopian concept, but the firm foundation of a developed country. He was the chairperson of the Common School Commission of Bihar, which submitted his report in 2007. Till his last day, he lamented the lack of political will to implement the common school system and was agonized by the subversion of the right to education. As the chief consultant of a trilogy of political documentary films, I had been commissioned to make for the Ministry of External Affairs on the history of NAM, South-South cooperation, and a 7,600 kilometer journey from New Delhi to Hanoi, he was forthright on camera with his contrarian views. But at the same time, he aided the filmmaker in negotiating the not so diplomatic Libertine corridors of South Block. In 2010, there was a move by friends of CSD to name the lane on which its building, Sangha Rachana, stood for after the founder, Durga Bhai Deshmukh, as that was her Karma Bhumi. But somebody whacked the lane away. Professor Muchkund and his associates could not take it, and a PL was filed in the Delhi High Court. So the case was not won. Professor Muchkund saw to it that CSD never recognized the new name of the lane in any way. In his last year, a royal battle was fought to install a lift in the CSD building so that Professor Muchkund could access his chamber, which was on the upper floor. But unfortunately, the permission for the installation from the local authorities did not come in time. Yet, he would make it a point to visit CSD and IIC every day to meet his associates. The picture you see here was a result of a photo session he insisted that I have with him in September of 2015. And this later became his favorite photograph. Professor Muchkun stood out as a beacon light of justice, equality, and integrity, and we shall sorely miss him. Thank you. I invite Professor Nityananda, Director, Council for Social Development, for sharing his thoughts. Thank you, Professor Madam, Mrs. Dubey, uh, Madhuji, and other dignitaries. Uh, this is a very solemn occasion to celebrate life of a person who I considered my teacher and mentor. He never formally taught me, uh, but yet uh, he became both teacher and mentor. You know, we get many teachers, but very few teachers can also become a mentor. So you can imagine the kind of teacher he was to me. And you know, for me, education and learning is not about uh, you know uh, reading or understanding your own discipline. But for me, teaching is uh, knowing the universe, knowing the truth. And this is something that I found uh, amazing. Uh, we have displayed his books outside. Uh, there are uh, 17 volumes, which of course uh, uh, somebody who is not uh, professionally an academician is, is quite a record. But you can see the range of his understanding. You have Lalan Fakir and you have biography of Netaji Subhas Bose. You know, getting this kind of range is, is unimaginable. So I met him first time in 1992 when 
we, uh, a group of students, wanted to understand what is there in Dunkel Draft. And we got uh, one of the this Professor Nair sitting here and Professor Dube. Uh, he was teaching at JNU that time to uh, enlighten us on Dunkel Draft because they were the stalwarts of uh, you know, trade issues uh, at that time. Right? And after that event, you know, he became my teacher because I, uh, you know, kind of continued to meet him. Uh, you know, sometimes he will even call me to uh, IIC, you know, to have coffee. You know, for a young student, that's a great honor. And of course, the fact that I was a student of Deepak Nair uh, probably played some role. Uh, but I became very, very personally close to him. And uh, if I write something, I will give it to him. And when I, I was writing my first book on trade issues, uh, I gave the manuscript to him and he went through the manuscript line by line, word by word, and gave comments uh, and uh, checked all spelling and grammar and all everything. And uh, it, of course, improved my book substantially. Uh, and I could get it published from a top publishing house. One day I, uh, you know, uh, curiously asked, sir, you have studied in a village school somewhere in Bihar that time, and how come your English is so excellent? And you will be shocked, he told me, you know, that shows another dimension of his character, the side of his character. He said, my English was not good, but I was lucky to get a wife who's excellent. His English, uh, her, excellent, her English was excellent. This is not an easy thing to say uh, in a patriarchal society in, in India. So giving due respect to wife and you know accepting that he had a lot of things to learn from his wife. And after that, whenever he finds some problem with my English, I would say, sir, I am not as lucky as you. And he will start laughing. You know, this was his, you know, uh, you know, and one side of the character. And his interest, as you have heard, ranged from everything, but his interest was also in food. So different kind of, he's open in terms of very, you know, any kind of food he is open. And I kind of learned that openness, that accept, try all kind of food you have. You know, when I got married, he told me, uh, one day we should meet over lunch, you, your wife, and I, and my wife. And when you were sitting, when after the food was ordered, he said, he said, can you tell me an appropriate Tagore's poem for this occasion? And I was at a loss. And he recited the entire poem. And I said, yes, if there could not be a better poem than this, uh, than what you have recited. And I, of course, read the poem, but I, I could not recite the entire poem. And to apologize to all other diplomats who might have served in Bangladesh, you know, in my understanding, it is difficult that you pursue your national interest vigorously as, as, a, as a diplomat, and yet you become a friend of that country. It's not easy. It's very, very difficult. And he achieved that. And many of you would not know, after his death, there has been glowing tributes in Bangladeshi newspapers, and they have described him as a friend of Bangladesh. This is, of course, an amazing achievement. So, after some time, when I met him in 92, I uh, he invited me to join I me mean, to join CSD. I joined CSD in 94. Uh, he was the director at, at that time, on the director. Of course, he was not taking any money. Uh, and after one year, uh, he became the president. And that was, in a sense, bad news for me, because as when he was director, I was uh, interacting with him on a daily basis, working with him directly. And uh, he became president, then, of course, he uh, was not meeting me directly, because it could possibly give a wrong message, you know, in the institute. 
but that was uh, something a loss for me and uh, again apology you know after i worked with him for one year with such a knowledgeable person you know it's difficult to work with anybody else so i was not pretty uh, comfortable and after few months i left he was of course unhappy that i left uh, but uh, and he in fact scolded me uh, you know he said i had lot of hope with you and uh, while i'm leaving uh, i thought he got very annoyed he will never talk to me again and i was surprised when after a couple of months he was releasing his book uh, one of his books and he invited me and uh, and after that we we continued and inter, you know incidentally i worked in cuts and dairy for a long time and in both the places i got him in advisory capacity and ultimately he uh, he got me to csd as director and uh, in this period of course i could not get him much because a lot of time there was covid and we would hardly meet him but whether he is in office or not you know as uh, ambassador samsung was saying he said he has to be in presence he's not in presence you know it's like an umbrella you know whether it is raining or whether there is sun uh, it doesn't matter you know the umbrella is there you can use it whenever it is needed so he gave me a sense of security you know he gave me the sense of security and i knew that it by anyhow there is some difficulty some trouble he is there to help me out uh, and uh, of course i uh, i will miss him because you know not just physically but psychologically he is not there but uh, you know this is nature you know the last song, song maul song sang by you know hachar <laughs> bitu rachin pakhi uh, this is just about the absolute truth of life you know and you know so i will miss him uh, a lot and i always enjoyed food love for his bengali literature and probably uh, many of you would not know that uh, because of his contribution in terms of popularizing bengali literature and culture outside bengal area you know he was given delict honoris causa by calcutta university and he was given on the same stage where uh, president uh, pranam mukherjee was given so that was a kind of unique achievement that that he could make Uh, i think with his departure we have all lost uh, a very very uh, you know knowledgeable and concerned citizen of india uh, thank you all my respect we have invited shri abhishek lempi of professor pushpan dobe to share his personal recollections and heartfelt reflections mm-hmm. to provide a deeper understanding of the man behind mm-hmm. Namaste everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I am Abhishek Dubey, a sports media professional, and I am speaking on the behalf of my aunt uh, Basanti Dubey and the entire Dubey family. Council of Social Development was my uncle's first home, and India International Center was his second home. We, as a whole, Dubey family, were his third home. So I. i would like to thank everyone over here for taking care of him so well which happened to be his first and second home as far as my memory goes my uncle was like this only right from the very beginning as a child i do remember when i we used to live in a small village aur jab wahan pe jab hum log village mein rehte the and my uncle used to come to that village to wo khud railway station se utarne ke baad gaadi se utar jate the और वो एक पगडंडी था उस पगडंडी से वो पैदल घर आते थे और पूरा गांव को घूमने के बाद लास्ट में वो घर घर आते थे ही यूज टू मीट एवरी वन ऑन द वे ग्रीट देम उनका हालचाल पूछते थे और 
लास्ट में वो घर आते थे जब हम लोग लगभग बच्चे के बच्चे के तौर पे सोए आते थे तो ही बिलोंग टू एवरी वन एंड आई गॉट ए फीलिंग ऑफ दिस इन द लास्ट फोर और फाइव डेज मच मोर एज आई गॉट कॉल्स फ्रॉम एवरी वेयर अराउंड संथाल प्रणा अभी यशवंत सिन्हा जी बैठे हुए थे ये संथाल प्रणा के डिस्ट्रिक्ट कलेक्टर रह चुके हैं तो ये मेमोरी है कि पीपल स्टार्टेड कॉलिंग फ्रॉम देयर एंड दे सेट कि यहाँ पे उनका मेमोरी क्यों नहीं हो रहा है यहाँ पे तुम लोग क्यों नहीं कोई रिच रिचुअल्स कर रहे हो तो देन एटी ईयर ओल्ड मैन कॉल्ड मी एंड ही सेट कि ही वाज द सन ऑफ सॉइल ही बिलोंग टू दिस प्लेस एंड यू विल हैव टू डू समथिंग फॉर हिम फॉर हियर तो दिस वाज द सॉर्ट ऑफ हिज पर्सनालिटी दैट ही बिलोंग टू ईच वन ऑफ यू एंड एवरी वन फेल्ड हिम एज इज ओन now as far as my personal thing goes i would like to carry three things as far as my uncle is concerned till my uh, till i reach my last the first thing is that he the type of energy that he carried with him the positive energy that he carried with him was immense and he was in control of his life and as far as that energy is concerned till the last breath of his life except the last few days if i remember He, he he carried that energy with him the second thing was the diverse knowledge which he carried carried that was immense uh, i would like to share certain experiences from my own life uh, to uh, prove it uh, take take this further when i came to delhi and uh, uh, he was like a mentor he was like a father figure he was every everything to me and uh, uh, when i joined ndtv as a media professor uh, so i was asked in ndtv as to which beat you will have matlab kaun se beat mein tum jaoge which beat beat report you will become so i at uh, it always happens in my family my father told me tum apne chacha se puchho so this was a word so maine apne chacha se baat kiya and i told him ki i want to meet you and discuss about that to so, unhone mujhe bulaya and then he asked me ki kaun sa beat tum chahte ho So I said so I want to become a sports reporter. So he didn't feel uh, very uh, good about that because he felt that I should take something serious. Why not political reporting or something like that, international news or something like that? But then he asked, started asking questions to me regarding the sports field. And I am telling you, वो ऐसा लग रहा था मुझे जैसे मैं हरी विकेट पे लॉट्स में खड़ा हूँ और मुझे हर तरह से बॉल इधर से उधर आया है. मतलब I, 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 I could not find answer to most of his questions. So it was uh, then the, when the entire conversation ended, I was so depressed and I was so he could feel my face. And then I told him one thing. I told uh, uh, Chacha, I would like to share one thing with you. Sachin Tendulkar के साथ एक partner था दिबांग गांधी, जो opening partner था. He went to Australia. So दिबांग गांधी लगातार तीन बार तीन बार zero पे out होके लौट के आ गया. तो बार बार ड्रेसिंग रूम में सचिन तेंदुलकर कप्तान था और वो उसे पूछता था कि तुम क्या मेगरा को नहीं खेल पाते हो इतना गेंद तो डालता है तो मैंने अपने चाचा को कहा कि आप मुझे मेरे से उम्मीद कर रहे हो कि मैं शुरू से ही सचिन तेंदुलकर के मैं तो दिमाग डालती हूँ देन माई चाचा टोल्ड मी की इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बिकम ए गुड प्रोफेसर यू विल हैव टू वर्क वेरी हार्ड और जो तुमने मेरे से अभी जो बात कहा वो आगे से कभी मर जाएगा किसी के साथ यू विल हैव टू वर्क सो हार्ड कि न मतलब इफ आई कैन राइज फ्रॉम सच इज फाइंडिंग एडवर्सिटी फाइटिंग पॉवर्टी फाइटिंग एवरीथिंग इन माई लाइफ यू हैव गॉट एवरीथिंग ऑन द प्लेटर यू विल हैव टू प्रूव योर सेल्फ सो दिस मेमोरी आई विल कैरी विथ इन टिल आई लीव देन थ्रू आउट द कोर्स ऑफ माई करियर जब वेन आई यूज टू राइट वेन आई यूज टू रिपोर्ट वेन आई यूज टू डू रिपोर्टिंग एंड डिफरेंट स्टेप तो कभी कभी उनका मेरे पास फोन आता था और जब उनका फोन आता था तो मेरे रोम पे कांपने लगते रहते थे मुझे लगता था कि मेरी पेशी होने वाली है आई यूज टू फील लाइक दैट कि अब क्या सवाल हो एंड वेन एवर आई यूज टू कम एंड मीट हिम देन ही यूज टू आस्क मी सर्टन क्वेश्चन ही यूज टू आस्क मी द डेवलपमेंट रिगार्डिंग दैट एंड ग्रेजुअली वट आई फेल्ट वॉज दैट मुझे वो पेशी नहीं लगने लगा ग्रेजुअली वो कन्वर्सेशन लगने लगा और एक फेज ऐसा आया जब वो मेरे से स्पोर्ट्स को लेकर बात करने लगे और एक दिन तो मुझे उन्होंने मुझे ये भी कहा कि वट आई लाइक अबाउट योर राइटिंग इज दैट कि most of the writers write about victory and defeat you are able to see sports beyond that 
स्वागत तो सच वर्ष माय अंकल जो कि शुरुआत के कट्टा पार्टी थे जिनको मैकरा के तरफ फेस करना बहुत टफ था लेकिन आप उनके जैसे उनके हार्ट में अंदर धीरे धीरे चले जाओगे सेलिब्रेट करोगे तो इतने ही आपको गुड फीलिंग खराब है सेकेंड थिंग आई वुड लाइक टू टेल अबाउट माई अंकल विच इज वेरी क्लियर टू मी इन दैट He, he used to always say one thing. See, I, I am not a legacy person. I don't believe in legacy uh, sort of things. People talk about that because I am this country's legacy. I, 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 Uh, because uh, he was a towering personality he has uh, 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 I, i can say a man of principle uh, who, 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 who who was a very hard working person but the values which he taught me were very very basic and those values will remain with me throughout my life during the last days i got more and more closer to him and i can say this thing with uh, uh, the thing the thing is that he, he was lover of tennis and we used to discuss tennis extensively with each other, uh, each other so when i talk in the parlance of tennis i would like to say one thing ki my relationship with him was not love or as we call in tennis uh, many sets mein wo aage rehte the uh, wo mujhe top speed bhi maarte the wo relationship mein har relationship ke tarah up and down hota tha but he taught me how to play the game as per the spirit of the game that will remain in my memory till i uh, breathe my last so as i said again uh, in television parlance i can say ki abhi hum log mere chacha jo hai wo break mein chale gaye hain hamara relationship break mein chala gaya but it's a small break and after the break uh, when, when we will meet again I, i can promise you one thing i will try to live with his values i will try to live the life uh, which he taught me uh, in, in, in uh, during his last days and during uh, both moments and last but not the least when we meet again we will meet over Uh, the sandwich uh, over the apple pie and the black coffee from india international center thank you now we will hear from a few words from professor dumas daughter ms matodo and in my time of course we can life that i'll just take this moment to um thank csd and iic for organizing this event um in particular um i'd like to thank professor bishwajit dhar uh, professor nityananda and professor mohanty from the council for social development uh, mr shyam saran mr k n shrivastava and mr kanwar wadi from iic Uh, on behalf of my mother and my family um our deepest thanks to all of those of you who spoke in tribute to my father um and i think i i speak for my mother when i say uh, you know, she she was uh, trained as a classical uh, vocalist for several decades so i think that on, on her behalf i can say that the musical performances um couldn't have been better chosen you know from my um, earliest childhood i remember the sound of her voice singing kabir bhajans and uh, to this day we have an ek sara from bangladesh uh, prominently displayed in their um, in their drawing room uh, so i'm i'm just going to close by expressing like my great appreciation uh, to all of you for your presence here today thank you There are many friends and admirers, like Ambassador Ambedkar Khatwa, President Association of Indian Diplomats, Senior Professor Mahendra B. Lamarji from JNU, 
Dr. Vasant Raman, Chairperson, Center for Women's Development Studies, and Shrish Saurabh Kumar, Visiting Professor, CSP, awarded the speaker to the capacity study, taking to do so. As we close this memorial service, let's honor Professor Murkan Nobe for his unparalleled integrity, kindness, and the profound impact he made on each of us. This gathering stands as a testament to his remarkable legacy, characterized by intellectual curiosity, social responsibility, and a steadfast commitment to improving our world. Thank you all for being here to pay tribute to Professor Dubey. May we cherish his influence on our lives and continue to be inspired by his extraordinary legacy. With this, we come to close this memorial service and we invite you to join us for tea, which is being served at Mimbalita. <laughs>